which is a very beneficial fruit for a human being. And from outside, it is all surrounded with palm trees. So you cannot really see what is inside. And it's all nice and green. Yani, subhanallah. And that's why the Jannah, the Jannah, it's called Jannah, because you cannot see what is inside of it. Jannah is whatever is hidden from you. Yes? For example, in Arabic, if someone is lost his mind, they call him Majnoon. Majnoon that means his rational, his rational thinking is hidden from him. And Jannah, that's what it means. It is hidden. It is surrounded by beautiful fruit, uh, by beautiful trees. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned two types of fruit, which is the most beneficial to mankind. Palms and Inab, grapes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants to give the disbelievers of Quraysh and the Muslims also who are greedy that listen to this example. Learn from this example. What is going to come? It's an example to explain to you the nature of mankind, the nature of the two groups of people. One group who loves the dunya and disbelieves in the hereafter and the other group who, who the dunya never made it to his heart and also he believes and seeks the reward in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, he, he will continue and uh, describe that beautiful garden for us. Or the beautiful, the beautiful two gardens. كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا Each of those two gardens brought forth its produce and failed not in the least therein, and we caused the river to gush forth in the midst of them. Yani here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, two gardens, yes? Uh, 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 that one person has two gardens, which is one big garden and a river gushes through them, through them and then it made it to nice, beautiful two gardens. So imagine this beautiful garden and... Uh, 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 so much fruit and nice river gushes forth from it. So here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا And he had a property of fruit and he said to his companion, Now, he's got the fruit, he's got the beautiful garden, he's got all this tree, he's got the river. Pride has taken him. Pride has taken him. Because the people of dunya, the more they are given, the, the more pride they get into their heart. And they would look at the poor person, and they would look at them with a, with a, with a, with a look of pity, and the look they are, look at them poor, they are, they're not very smart, they do not know how to make money, they're not very shrewd, they're not the nice business people, so they would, look, they would look down at them. They would look at them in, 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 in a way of um, dislike, subhanallah al -Azim. And here, he said to his friend, he's got a friend, which is his little bit poor. And in some, yani the ulama also said, 
that his friend, he was wealthy like him, but he spent everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this man looked around his garden and he said to his friend, look at this. أنا أعز أنا أكثر من جمالا وأعز نفرا. In the course of mutual talk, he said, I am more than you in wealth and stronger in respect of men. يعني I've got more men. I have more workers. I have like fifty people working under me. I have a beautiful garden. I have more money than you. And this is exactly the same view of Fir'aun wal Iyadu Billah. See, see, when you look at someone. And the measurement and, and the benchmark that you use, how much money they have, what car they drive, how many houses that you own, and in which suburb they own, either they have a, in a nice uh, uh, plushy suburb or in a suburb where there are a lot of poor people are. So this is the look that Qarun had and Pharaoh had, and even Iblis is the one who started it. And shall I go through these verses to show you how these people think? وَنَادَى فِرْعَوْنُ فِي قَوْمِهِ فِرْعَوْنُ called into his people قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مِلْكُ مِصْرِ Oh people, can't you see that I own Misr, Egypt? وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ And all these rivers that I, that I own, it runs from under me. Can't you see? I deserve to be the Lord here. I deserve to be the God here. What's this poor man, Musa, wants to, wants to take you away from my kingdom? See, this is the same look these, these arrogant, rich people have. And here he said, قَالَ إِبْلِيسِ يعني, uh, Exactly, this is the word of Iblis. Iblis, عَلَيْهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا يَسْتَحِقُ He said, قال, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asked him, قَالَ يَا إِبْلِيسِ O oh, Iblis. ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي؟ What has prevented you from prostrating to what I have created with my two hands? أستكبرت أم كنت من العالين؟ Is it is it out of pride and you are you think yourself you are above everyone? What did Iblis لعنه الله reply with? قال أنا خير منه. I am better than Adam. خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ You created me from fire and you created him from clay. And this is the qiyas, the evil uh, uh, qiyas he used that I am better than him. Who is he? Who is he? He's created our clay. He's, in, he's from a lower class than I, am, than, than, than I am. So I'm not prostrating to him. I'm not saluting him. That is the continuous look. He, Iblis, fooled himself. He thought that fire is better than clay. Fire is better than clay. But if you would look into reality, you see people, they use clay far more than they use fire. And people are more reacting towards the clay in a nicer way than fire because you get scared from fire. Fire burns you. While clay, you build houses from it. Fire destroys houses, while clay builds houses. Fire destroys all the crops, while clay, you can use it to uh, plant seeds and, and, and have nice crop from it. So subhanAllah, he could not see that. Also, another example from the Qur'an. And let me go through these examples, uh, uh, because they're very important, so we can establish and instill the idea in our head. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Qarun, إِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ Indeed, Qarun was from the people of Musa. And then he has arrogantly, he was an arrogant towards them. And he behaved arrogantly towards them. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَةِ And we gave him of the treasures that of which the keys would have been a burden to a body of strong men. Yani subhanallah, this man Qarun had wealth that the, sa- the, 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 the safe that he kept his wealth in, the keys, all of them, if they put together a group of people with, with the strong bodies, they cannot carry just the keys. That's how much wealth he had. If قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب 
Farihin um, uh, 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 here, and his people said to him, do not exclude with ungratefulness to Allah's favor. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes not those who are glad with ungratefulness to, the, to Allah's favor. And here, yani, the, his people advised Qarun, advised him and they said, وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this wealth. See, it is not wrong to be given wealth. Uthman radiallahu anhu was a very wealthy man. Yes? Also, uh, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf and lots of companions were very wealthy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them for, with, with a lot of wealth, but they spent it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what they said to him. But seek with, with, with that wealth which Allah has bestowed on you, the home of the hereafter. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ and forget not your proportion from lawful in, uh, uh, enjoyment in this world. And you can also live this world, and you can enjoy this world, but don't forget the hereafter. And do good as Allah has been good to you. And وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And do not seek and seek not mischief in the land that really Allah likes not. Then uh, 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 the, the ones who commit crime and sins and sins and oppress and, uh, uh, and commit mischief uh, in the land. And here, what was the response of Qarun? He said, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي Exactly the same response as the shaitan. He said, I have given this, Allah al he, he He even rejected to say, Alhamdulillah. He doesn't want to even say, thank for Allah, though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this. He said, yani, I have been given this based on the knowledge that I have. I am a very shrewd, very smart businessman. I work very hard. This is my hands, what, this is what my hands have earned. Subhanallah al-Azim. Subhanallah al-Azim. And this is, we say that, my brothers and sisters in Islam, on a daily basis without noticing. Yani when, for example, one of us builds a nice house or achieves high marks, in, in university, yes, and if someone says, MashaAllah, look at this house, look at these marks, it's very nice. He says, yes, see how smart I am, or yes, indeed, I am a very hard-working person. I worked very hard to get to here. He, we forget to say, Alhamdulillah, this is from the blessing of Allah. We've seen in the last lesson that the Prophet wasallam he did not say, inshaAllah, in Jibreel stopped for 15 days. And then we do not even say Alhamdulillah at times. We forget to say that. But if we always in the <coughs> but if we always in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our, uh, on our minds, then we would never forget to say Alhamdulillah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this, He said, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ So we caused the earth to swallow him and his dwelling, uh, and his dwelling, then he had no group or party or anyone to help him against Allah, nor was he one of those who could save themselves. Subhanallah al-Azim. And, 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 there was a group of people impressed with Qarun. Impressed with Qarun and impressed with his wealth. And they were wishing as we wish to be rich. They were wishing just for the same thing. Yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still described what they, uh, these people. وَأَصْبَحَ الَّذِينَ تَمَنَّوا مَكَانَهُ بِالْأَمْسِ يَقُولُونَ وَيْكَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَقْدِرُ And for those who had desired a position like him, the day before, they began to say, no, you, not that it is Allah, yani, uh, 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 enlarges the provisions and he gives the provision or restricts it whom, uh, to whomever he pleases of his slave. Had it not been that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was gracious to us, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, Lawla an, yani, uh, describe what they have said, Lawla ammanna Allahu alayna lakhasafa bina. 
يعني if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gracious to us, he would have caused the earth to swallow us, to swallow us, to swallow us up also. وَيْكَأَنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ وَيْكَأَنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ Now, you not that the disbelievers will uh, never be successful. Subhanallah al-Azim. And this is what, يعني, the stories of some of the people who their wealth and their arrogance drove them to that level. Here, the man, we go back to the man with two gardens, and he walked in with pride, and I can imagine in my head, how he would be walking into his garden. Yani, uh, you can imagine the, the big army commanders when they walk with their head up whilst their army is presented in front of them and they think that now they are on the top of the world. That's what he said. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ قَالَ مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا And he went into his garden while he's in a state of pride and disbelief unjust to himself. He said, I think not that this will ever perish. Subhanallah. Walking with pride and arrogance into his garden, looking around, his head is up. says, I don't think this is ever going to be destroyed. Subhanallah al And here, I want to mention and explain this point. What does ظالمٌ لنفسه mean? ظالم, العلماء, the scholars define ظلم as وَضْعُ الشَّيْءِ فِي غَيْرِ مَحَلِّهِ To put something where it does not belong. To the meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called kufr, kufr disbelief, and uh, polytheism in the Qur'an as zulm. Why? Because when you worship something beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you did not put the worship where it does belong. If the worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why if you perform it to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have done zulm. And exactly, a person can be zalim li nafsih when he looks at his wealth and he does not thank the one who should be uh, uh, thankful to, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he does not realize that Allah is the one who bestowed this blessing on him, then he becomes ظالم لنفسه. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in another verses, يعني, uh, uh, he explained also this to us. But before we get to them, we continue um, what he said. He said, وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةَ وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا And I think not the hour will ever come. And if indeed I am brought back to my Lord on the day of resurrection, I surely shall find better than this when I return to Him. Look at this arrogance, subhanAllah al -Azim. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously warned us from not being impressed with what people have from wealth. So our... And as it's been said that... In the issues of dunya, in the issues of dunya, look at the people who are lower than you. And the issues of the hereafter, look at the people who are higher than you. To the meaning that at the issues of wealth and so on, the dunya, when you see a rich man, yes, always think not with the rich people, think of the poor people. Yani think of, yani for example, some of us here, uh, some, uh, some live in America, some live in, in England, some live in Australia, most of it wealthy countries. So, when you look, look at the people who are in Africa, who are in places that are starving, they can't find food to eat, then when you are in hardship and you have a bit of wealth, you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I am still doing it much better than a lot of people. And in the issues of Akhirah and hereafter, always look towards the prophets, the Sahaba, the scholars. This way you always belittle whatever ibadah you do. And here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يعني, uh, uh, to the meaning in these verses, لولا أن يكون الناس أمة واحدة that if it wasn't that the, all the people, everyone on, on this face of the earth would become one community, yes, 
لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَا يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ We would have made for the ones who disbelieve in Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, to their houses a ceiling from silver and stairways they ascend on it they ascend on it Shus subhanallah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not really fearing that the Muslims they would follow the kuffar completely yes they would follow the kuffar he would make every kafir for every kafir for every disbeliever in his house every, he would give them houses with silver ceilings and not beautiful stairways that can ascend on and for the houses nice beautiful big doors and gates and nice beautiful expensive beds they would rest on it and gold ornament and all of this is just the enjoyment of this life Indeed, the hereafter is for the pious ones. See here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes all this for us, to bring us to a very important point, then don't be astonished, don't be, don't be so greedy running after the dunya, because that usually leads you to disbelieve or reject the hereafter. To the meaning, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it doesn't mean that you disbelieve in the hereafter, that you do reject altogether the idea of resurrection. No. Yani, for example, part of disbelieving in the hereafter, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Jews when they said, قَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتٍ They said the hereafter, yani, the, the fire would only touch, touch us few days. Yani we're not going for a very, very long time, only a few days, and Allah will take us to paradise. That's their belief, and that's why they were tyrants. Yes? And that's the, 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 the point here, my, 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 my brothers and sisters in Islam, that you don't have to completely disbelieve in the hereafter, but just always have these rosy dreams that Allah will forgive you, Allah is most merciful, and then you go greedy in your life, arrogantly, with full of pride, doing haram, collecting money without thinking where it is coming from, where you are spending it, are you oppressing others, are you um, uh, uh, acting arrogantly, yes? This is part of really not fully believing in the hereafter, because if you really fully believing in the hereafter, you believe that you are going to be punished, you are going to go to Jahannam wal billah if you do this. And this is what really Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, uh, we were one, some of the most humiliated people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us glory with this religion Islam. If we seek a glory, yes, in other than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to humiliate us. And this is how the Muslims should be seeking glory. Not from wealth and money. And, 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 and dunya, no, you should seek the glory from Islam. So here, we go back to this per, the, the, the person in the gardens, with the two gardens. His righteous brother in Islam, he took his hand and he took him to give him an advice. Listen to this beautiful advice. After the person arrogantly he wants to reject the, he, he rejected the hereafter, and he, he said, even if I come back, even if I come back, يعني, uh, in, in the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he looks after me in this dunya, gave me everything, he would look after me in the hereafter. Silly analogy. That has no basis. Subhanallah al So, he took, his friend took him, he said to him, قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم ثم سواك رجلا. His companion said to him during the talk with him, Do you disbelieve in him who created you out of dust? Then out of نطفة mixed semen drop of male and female discharge. يعني 
not from uh, uh, just a little mixed uh, 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 clot of blood and fashioned you into a man. Yani, he, he's trying to take him back and humble him down and calm him down. He says, remember who you are. Ya Akhi, when that soul comes out, you're nothing other than a, cro a, a, a corpse. Flesh, you're nothing but a body with no soul, with no soul. Flesh and bone going to rot within a few hours. He took him back into his creation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you with the, from yani nothing, remember who you are. Why the, the arrogance? You come from clay and dust. And one day you are going to become clay and dust. And you came from nothing, from a drop of semen. So what is the arrogance all about? What, who do you think you are? Not very long if your mother did not change your nappy, you'll cry all night and day. You're hopeless to feed yourself. Subhanallah al -Azim. Yani, if only we remember how we were when we were babies. We could not even get food into our mouth. And then after Allah gives us all this money and wealth and power and muscles, we want to drive around arrogantly. And that's what he's trying to tell him. Relax a little bit. Don't disbelieve in the Almighty Lord who created you from dust, from clay, from dust, from nothing, from semen. And then he made you a man, a strong man with wealth. Rabbi, ولا أشرك بربي أحدا. He said to him, but as for me, as for my part, I believe that he is Allah my Lord. And none shall I associate as a partner with my Lord. And he kept on advising him and he said, ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا. He said, it was better for you to say, when you entered your garden, that which Allah wills will come to pass. There is no power but with Allah. If you see me less than you in wealth and children, طيب. فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح سعيدا زلقا. It may be that my Lord will give me something better than, than your garden. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down husban, torment, yes, bolt, destroys it from the sky, yes, then it will be a slippery earth. أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا Or the water, the rough of the gardens become deep, sunken underground, so that you will never be able to seek it. Subhanallah al-Azim. La ilaha illallah. Yani, here, he's given him that. I said, watch out. Watch what are you are saying. Say alhamdulillah. Say ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. And here, let me mention this to you, brothers and sisters in Islam. If you see your friend has a beautiful, something nice, yes, don't say, wow, where did you get this from? No. Say ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. Yes. Yes, say, ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. Because this way you don't envy them. And similar, similarly, yes, when you have something beautiful, you see your husband dressed nicely, you see your um, wife dressed nicely, your son dressed nicely, your friend dressed nicely, say, ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless what he gave you. This way, no hasad. No envy would occur. And if there is any little bit of envy in your heart, inshallah will come out and will be expiated and erased, inshallah. So here, he said to him, remember that as Allah gave you everything, and subhanallah, yani today this is happening in America and the rest of the world. All these markets are crashing. Just not longer we, 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 we the president are happy and they're saying now we are on top of the world, the economy cannot come any better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed it for them. Recession all over the world, companies are closing, banks are closing, 
This is a lesson for the people to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to realize what they are doing wrong. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send something and destroy it and all these poor countries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could open for them gates of wealth that they never thought of. It is not hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in other يعني, verses where He said, فَذَنِّي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا أَيَعْلَمُونَ وَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ إِنَّ كَيْدِ مَتِينَ That then leave me alone with such as the lie this Qur'an. We should punish them gradually from direction they perceive not. And we will grant them a respite. Verily my plan is strong. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He would give people, He would give them wealth, He would give them money, He would give them life. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slowly, slowly, gradually, yes, He's dragging them, wal'iyazu billah, and plotting against them from a way they did not know, as happened to this person from the two gardens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ordered, ordered His order, وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the torment and sent the punishment. So His fruit were encircled with ruin and He remained clapping with His hand with sorrow over what he had spent up on it while it was all destroyed on its uh, uh, terraces. And he could only say, would that I had ascribed no partners to my Lord. Subhanallah al-Azim. Now he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encircled his garden and destroyed it, all of it for him until it became... Uh, uh, a flat on the ground and he then clapped his hand and he said La ilaha illallah what did I do to myself I should not have done that I should not have associated anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I should not uh, have associated my wealth and other things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the case of mankind at all the time only remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are destroyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another verse, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَيِّرُكُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ حَتَّى إِذَا كُنْتُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَرَيْنَ بِهِمْ بِرِيحٍ طَيِّبَةٍ وَفَرِحُوا بِهَا جَاءَتْهَا رِيحٌ عَاصِفٌ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْمَوْجُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ أُحِيطَ بِهِمْ بِهِمْ دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين لئن أنجيتنا من هذه لنكونن من الشاكرين. He he it is who enables you to travel through the land and the sea till when you are in the ship and they sail them they sail with them with a favorable wind. يعني ذا يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى is describing this image for us. Look at the people. يعني some of the people who are sailing in the sea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends nice favorable wind that the boats can sail. And they are glad they're in. Then comes a storm and wind. And the waves come to them from all sides. And they think that they are encircled therein. Then they invoke Allah making their faith pure for Him. Alone saying, O oh Allah, if you deliver us from this, we will show, we shall truly be the, uh, of the grateful. Yani, when everything is in circle them, they go back to Allah. Oh Allah, please save me. When you save me, I'll become righteous. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the chance. You need to take the opportunity and the chance. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to say about this person, وَلَمْ تَكُلْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا and he had no group of men to help him against Allah, nor could he defend or save himself. Yani, 
as exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Qarun, that he had no helpers. No one was able to help him, subhanallah al azim And here also, no one was able to help this, this, this person and um, uh, to save him from that calamity that came to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the dunya for us. In a beautiful verses in the Quran, he describes the dunya for us and the end and the result of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَثَلِ مَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ The simile, the example of, the, of, of this dunya, like a water, rain, a beautiful rain that we send down from the heavens. فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ And then the vegetation of this earth was mixed with the rain and it produced a beautiful fruit for what people can eat and the cattle and sheep will eat. حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَّيَّنَتْ وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا Until the earth has become an ornament, clad with decoration, a beautiful, وَزَّيَّنَتْ decorated, وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا And the people who owned the earth, and the people who owned it, they thought now they are powerful over it. They are in command of it. They own it. Then, when they reached the pinnacle of ownership, and pride, and يعني, uh, uh, feeling wealthy, and they can control everything, the order will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes then. أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Our order, our command comes daytime or at night. فَشَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيبًا فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيبًا كَأَنْ لَمْ تَغْنَى بِالْأَمْسِ And we destroyed it, we mowed it down, we, 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 we destroyed it, we flattened it as if it never was a beautiful garden before that or yesterday. كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون Thus do we explain the ayat, the proofs, the evidence, the lessons, the signs, the signs, the revelation in detail for the, for, for, uh, the people who reflect. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the, that person of the two cardinals, هنالك الولاء الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا here he said there on the day of resurrection الولاية, the protection, the power, the authority and the kingdom will be for Allah alone the true God Allah is the best for reward and the best for the final end لا إله إلا الله none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same surah to continue he gave us another example about this hayat al-dunya he said وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا And put forward for them the example of the life of this world. It is like the water rain which we send down from the sky and the vegetation of the earth mingle with it and becomes fresh and green but later it becomes dry and broken pieces which the wind scatter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys it. After he gave it life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys it. That's why it is by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by living, by living the life of righteousness, this is the only way you can reach success in this life and also in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed this story for us by saying المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا Wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا But the good righteous deeds, the, uh, deeds that last are better with your Lord for rewards and better in respect of hope See, this is the story of these two men. One of them was a wealthy man, and the second one was a very poor man. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that wealthy man everything that he, 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 he was seeking. He gave him the wealth. But he denied, he denied the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never pursued the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While his friend, Allah also gave him some wealth. But he spent it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The man was driven arrogantly until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed everything for him. And then he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it was too late. Too late when he had the chance, he was able to do so. The moral of the story, my, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that we should, even if we are wealthy, we should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should always employ everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to achieve piety and to look towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not let our wealth or our... When he looks at his wealth and he does not thank the one who should be uh, uh, thankful to, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he does not realize that Allah is the one who bestowed this blessing on him, then he becomes zalimun li nafsihi. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in another verses, yani, uh, uh, he explained also this to us, but before we get to them, we continue um, what he said. He said, وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا And I think not the hour will ever come. And if indeed I am brought back to my Lord on the day of resurrection, I surely shall find better than this when I return to Him. Look at this arrogance, subhanallah al-Azim. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously warned us from not being impressed with what people have from wealth. So our and as it's been said that in the issues of dunya, in the issues of dunya, look at the people who are lower than you. And the issues of the hereafter, look at the people who are higher than you. To the meaning that uh, the issues of wealth and so on, the dunya, when you see a rich man, yes, always think, not with the rich people, think of the poor people. Yani think of, yani for example, some of us here, uh, some, uh, some live in America, some live in, in England, some live in Australia, most of it wealthy countries. So, when you look, look at the people who are in Africa, who are in places that are starving, they can't find food to eat, then when you are in hardship and you have a bit of wealth, you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I am still doing it much better than a lot of people. And in the issues of Akhirah and hereafter, always look towards the prophets, the Sahaba, the scholars. This way you always belittle whatever ibadah you do. And here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يعني, uh, to the meaning in these verses, لولا أن يكون الناس أمة واحدة. And if it wasn't that the, all the people, everyone on, fi- on this face of the earth, would become one community, yes, لجعلنا لما يكفر بالرحمن لبيوتهم سقفا من سقفا من فضة ومعارج عليها يظهرون. We would have made for the ones who disbelieve in Ar Rahman, the Most Merciful, to their houses a ceiling from silver and stairways they ascend on it they ascend on it Shus subhanallah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not really fearing that the Muslims they would follow the kuffar completely yes they would follow the kuffar he would make every kafir for every kafir for every disbeliever in his house he would give them houses with Silver ceilings 
and not beautiful stairways that can ascend on. وَلِبُيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُرُورًا عَلَيْهَا يَتَّكِيُونَ And for their houses, nice beautiful big doors and gates and nice beautiful expensive beds that would rest on it. وَزُخْرُفَ And gold ornament. إِنْ وَنْكُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And all of this is just the enjoyment of this life. وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Indeed, the hereafter is for the pious ones. See here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes all this for us, to bring us to a very important point, then don't be astonished, don't be, don't be so greedy running after the dunya, because that usually leads you to disbelieve or reject the hereafter. To the meaning, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it doesn't mean that you disbelieve in the hereafter that you do reject altogether the idea of resurrection. No. Yani, for example, part of disbelieving in the hereafter, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Jews when they said, قَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا They said the hereafter, yani, that the fire would only touch, touch us few days. Yani, we're not going for very, very long time, only a few days, and Allah will take us to paradise. That's their belief, and that's why there were tyrants. Yes? And that's the, 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 the point here, my, 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 my brothers and sisters in Islam, that you don't have to completely disbelieve in the hereafter, but just always have these rosy dreams that Allah will forgive you, Allah is most merciful, and then you go greedy in your life, arrogantly, with full of pride, doing haram, collecting money without thinking where it is coming from, where you are spending it, are you oppressing others, are you um, uh, uh, acting arrogantly? Yes? This is part of really not fully believing in the hereafter. Because if you really fully believing in the hereafter, you believe that you are going to be punished. You are going to go to Jahannam al billah if you do this. And this is what really Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said. Uh, we were one some of the most humiliated people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us glory with this religion Islam. If we seek a glory, yes, in other than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to humiliate us. And this is how the Muslims should be seeking glory. Not from wealth and money and 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 and, and dunya. No. You should seek the glory from Islam. So here, we go back to this per, the, the, the person in the gardens, with the two gardens. His righteous brother in Islam, he took his hand and he took him to give him an advice. Listen to this beautiful advice. After the person arrogantly, he wants to reject, the, he, he rejected the hereafter, and he, he said, even if I come back, even if I come back, uh, in, in the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he looks after me in this dunya, gave me everything, he would look after me in the hereafter. Silly analogy. That has no basis. Subhanallah al So, he took, his friend took him, he said to him, قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا his companion said to him during the talk with him, Do you disbelieve in him who created you out of dust? Then, out of nutfa, mixed semen drop of male and female discharge, yani, nutfa, uh, 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 just a little mixed uh, 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 clot of blood, and fashioned you into a man. Yani, he, he's trying to take him back and humble him down. And calm him down. He says, remember who you are. Ya akhi, when that soul comes out, you're nothing other than a, cro- a, a, a corpse. Flesh, you're nothing but a body with no soul. With no soul. Flesh and bone going to rot within a few hours. He took him back into his creation, 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you with the, from yani nothing, remember who you are. Who are the, the arrogance? You come from clay and dust, and one day you are going to become clay and dust, and you came from nothing, from a drop of semen. So what is the arrogance all about? What, who do you think you are? Not very long if your mother did not change your nappy, you'll cry all night and day. You're hopeless to feed yourself. Subhanallah al-Azim. Yani, if only we remember how we were when we were babies. We could not even get food into our mouth. And then after Allah gives us all this money and wealth and power and muscles, we want to drive around arrogantly. And that's what he's trying to tell him. Relax a little bit. Don't disbelieve in the Almighty Lord who created you from dust, from clay, from dust, from nothing, from semen. And then he made you a man, a strong man with wealth. Allah Rabbi wala ushriku bi Rabbi ahada. He said to him, but as for me, as for my part, I believe that he is Allah my Lord. And none shall I associate as a partner with my Lord. And he kept on advising him and he said, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِنْ تَرَنِي أَنَا أَقَلُّ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَوَلَدًا He said, it was better for you to say when you entered your garden that which Allah wills will come to pass. There is no power but with Allah. If you see me less than you in wealth and children, طيب. فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح سعيدا زلقا It may be that my Lord will give me something better than, than your garden and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down حسبان, torment, yes, bolt, destroys it from the sky yes, then it will be a slippery earth أو يصبح مَاؤُهَا غَوْرًا فَلَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ لَهُ طَلَبًا Or the water, the rough of the gardens become deep sunken underground so that you will never be able to seek it. Subhanallah al-Azim. La ilaha illallah. Yani here he's given in that I said, watch out. Watch what are you saying. Say alhamdulillah. Say ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. And here let me mention this to you, brothers and sisters in Islam. If you see your friend has a beautiful, something nice, yes, don't say, wow, where did you get this from? No, say, ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. Yes, yes, say, ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. Because this way you don't envy them. And similar, similarly, Yes, when you have something beautiful, you see your husband dressed nicely, you see your um, wife dressed nicely, your son dressed nicely, your friend dressed nicely, say, ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless what he gave you. This way, no hasad, no envy would occur. And if there is any little bit of envy in your heart, inshallah will come out and will be expiated and erased, inshallah. So here, he said to him, Remember that as Allah gave you everything, and subhanallah, yani today this is happening in America and the rest of the world. All these markets are crashing. Just not longer where, where, where the presidents are happy and they're saying, now we are on top of the world, the economy cannot become any better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed it for them. A recession all over the world. Companies are closing, banks are closing. This is a lesson for the people to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to realize what they are doing wrong. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send something and destroy it and all these poor countries, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could open for them gates of wealth that they never thought of. It is not hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in other يعني, verses where He said, فَذَنِّي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا أَيَعْلَمُونَ وَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ إِنَّ كَيْدِ مَتِينَ That then leave me alone with such as the lie this Qur'an. We should punish them gradually from direction they proceed not. 
and we will grant them a respite. Verily, my plan is strong. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He would give people, He would give them wealth, He would give them money, He would give them life. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala slowly, slowly, gradually, yes, He's dragging them wal'iyadhu billah and plotting against them from a way they did not know as happened to this person from the two gardens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ordered, ordered His order, وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the torment and sent the punishment so his fruit were encircled with ruin and he remained clapping with his hand with sorrow over what he had spent upon it while it was all destroyed on its uh, uh, terraces and he could only say, would that I had ascribed no partners to my Lord. Subhanallah al -Azim. Now, he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encircled his garden and destroyed it, all of it for him until it became uh, uh, a flat on the ground. And he then clapped his hand and he said, La ilaha illallah. What did I do to myself? I should not have done that. I should not have associated anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should not have associated my wealth and other things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the case of mankind at all the time. Only remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another verse, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَيِّرُكُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ حَتَّى إِذَا كُنْتُمْ في الفلك وجرين بهم بريح طيبة وفرحوا بها جاءتها ريح عاصف وجاءهم الموج من كل مكان وظنوا أنهم أحيط بهم ودع بهم دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين لئن أنجيتنا من هذه لنكونن من الشاكرين هي he, it is who enables you to travel through the land and the sea. Till when you are in the ship, and they sail them, they sail with them with a favorable wind. Yani that, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing this image for us. Look at the people, yani some of the people who are sailing in the sea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends nice favorable wind that the boats can sail. And they are glad they're in. Then comes a storm and wind. And the waves come to them from all sides. And they think that they are encircled therein. Then they invoke Allah, making their faith pure for Him. Allah saying, O oh Allah, if you deliver us from this, we will sure, we shall truly be the, uh, of the grateful. Yani, when everything is encircled them, they go back to Allah, oh Allah, please save me. When you save me, I'll become righteous. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the chance. You need to take the opportunity and the chance. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to say about this person, وَلَمْ تَكُلْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا And he had no group of men to help him against Allah, nor could he defend or save himself. Yani, as exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Qarun, that he had no helpers. No one was able to help him. Subhanallah al -Azim. And here also, no one was able to help this, this, this person and um, uh, to save him from that calamity that came to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the dunya for us. In the beautiful verses in the Quran, he describes the dunya for us and the end and the result of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَثَلِ مَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ The simile, the example of, the, of, of this dunya, like a water, rain, a beautiful rain that we send down from the heavens. فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ and then the vegetation of this earth was mixed with the rain 
and produced a beautiful fruit from what people can eat and the cattle and sheep will eat. حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها حتى إذا أخذت أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها until the earth has become an ornament clad with decoration a beautiful وزينت decorated وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها and the people who owned the earth and the people who owned it they thought now they are powerful over it. They are in command of it. They own it. Then, when they reach the pinnacle of ownership and pride and يعني, uh, uh, feeling wealthy and they can control everything, the order will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes then. أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Our order, our command comes daytime or at night. فشعلناها حصيبا فجعلناها حصيبا كأن لم تغنى بالأمس and we destroyed it we mowed it down we, 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 we destroyed it we flattened it as if it never was the beautiful garden before that or yesterday كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون thus do we explain the ayat the proofs the evidence the lessons the signs, the signs, the revelation in detail for the, for, for, uh, the people who reflect. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the, that person of the two cardinals, هُنَالِكَ الْوَيَاءَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ عُقْبًا Here, he said, there on the day of resurrection, الْوَلَايَةُ the protection, the power, the authority and the kingdom will be for Allah alone. The true God, Allah, is the best for reward and the best for the final end. La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same surah to continue, he gave us another example about this hayat al-dunya. He said, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا and put forward for them the example of the life of this world it is like the water rain which we send down from the sky and the vegetation of the earth mingle with it and becomes fresh and green but later it becomes dry and broken pieces which the wind scatter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys it. After he gave it life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys it. That's why it is by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by living, by living the life of righteousness, this is the only way you can reach success in this life and also in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed this story for us by saying, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا Wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا But the good righteous deeds the, uh, deeds that last are better with your Lord for rewards and better in respect of hope See, this is the story of these two men One of them was a wealthy man and the se uh, uh, second one was a very poor man and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that wealthy man everything that he, 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 he was seeking he gave him the wealth but he denied he denied the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he never pursued the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while well, his friend Allah also gave him some wealth but he spent it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The man was driven arrogantly until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed everything for him. And then he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it was too late. Too late when he had the chance, he was able to do so. The moral of the story, my, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that we should, even if we are wealthy, we should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should always employ everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to achieve piety 
and to look towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not let our wealth or our...